What's up guys, Justin here with TheSketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp quick modeling tutorial for you. So for those of you that follow me on my other channel, The Rendering Essentials, you know that I've been doing a little bit with creating like custom light fixtures um, for your rendering library. Because one of the things that can be a little bit problematic is just not having a library of those light fixtures that you can quickly and easily bring in. So I wanted to talk through just a simple way of creating a light fixture that you can make to the right size and then you can take that and you can save it to your model library so you can kind of follow this process for most light fixtures though we're going to start with a fairly simple one so let's go ahead and just jump into it all right so the best way you can do this is to find a photo reference of the fixture that you're looking for so what I want to do is I'm going to start by importing a reference image so we're gonna open up uh, an image that I've downloaded um, it's of a light fixture on Amazon and it's just a regular JPEG image and so we just want to go to file import and we just want to click on the button for use image as image. We're going to click on import. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring this in and you can see how when you click on import, this allows you to set one corner and then another, and then you can go ahead and click again in order to place this. And for now, it doesn't really matter how big this is. Cause what, and what, so what we want to do is we want to bring in our image um, and then set it to a certain scale. So in order to do that, what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna erase out my default model here and we're just going to set the scale of this image so in order to do that we're gonna use the tape measure tool so to bring the, to use the tape measure tool we want to click on this button right here and you want to tap the control key to make sure the little plus isn't showing up if the plus is in here what this is gonna do is this is gonna create guides you don't want this to create guides we want to use this to rescale our model and so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna activate the tape measure tool and we're gonna come in here and you can see how this gives us basically a dimension that we can use. And so what we wanna do is we wanna find one end of this dimension point right here and single click. We wanna move our mouse over and then we wanna click on our second point right here. So now that we've clicked twice, you can see how what we have down here is we have an option to enter value to resize model. And so basically what that means is that means that I can actually come in here and type in a length using my keyboard for what I want the distance between those two points I clicked on to be. And then I can hit the enter key. And so what this is going to ask me is if I want to resize the model. And I'm going to go ahead and say yes. One thing to be aware of is make sure that you don't do this inside of a bigger model because um, you might accidentally resize your whole model and you don't want to do that. That's why I'm kind of modeling this separate. But now if I was to come in here and um, I'm going to tap control to turn off create guide mode. But now if I single click here here you can see how this is 11 and 13 16 so just about what we want this to be and so now what we want to do because this is now to scale so if we were to measure like right here this should assuming this image didn't get distorted in any way this should be about 5.6 inches which it is so or close enough for what we're trying to do here and so now what we have is we have an image that's to scale that we can now model on top of. And so the first thing I want to do when I'm modeling this, because basically what we're going to do is we're going to draw out the profile of this object, then we're going to use the follow me tool to extrude it. So what I want to do is I want to start um, probably around the middle at the very top or the very bottom. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and start at the very top. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna set a point right here just for the sake of what we're doing right now. And so you can see how this is supposed to be 1.3 inches. So I'm just gonna type in 1.3 and hit the enter key. So that's gonna be my length um, for this item right here. So, and then this middle piece is kind of adjustable which is nice. So it doesn't really matter how long this is so we can get this pretty close. And we're gonna say that this is gonna be about a one inch piece right here. So then we can do the same thing down at the bottom. And you may want to kind of inference from the top right here, but basically what we want to do is we want to find this bottom point and we want to make sure it's straight up and down from here. So just use your inferencing in order to do this. So we're going to single click here. We're going to move our mouse up and we're going to type in 5.6 and hit the enter key. So what that's done is that's drawn a line that's about 5.6 inches. Once you've drawn this in here, you may want to resize it so that it kind of lines up with what's shown right here. 
So you can see how now this is in here at the proper length. And so then I'm gonna draw another line to about the top of this piece. So I'm gonna go ahead and assume that's about two inches. And then this other piece I'm gonna assume is kind of like the piece at the top. And we'll go ahead and put this in at something like three quarters of an inch. So that ought to get us pretty close. So, and then we can draw an edge up to the top right here. And you can see how what I've done is I've just drawn a number of different edges in here that are kind of, a, they're kind of approximating the different parts and pieces of this light. And so we're going to keep this as close as possible to real world scale because this will be more useful if it's close to that. But for this situation, I'm just going to single click here. And because this is 11.8 inches wide, I'm going to type in 5.9 inches right here. So you can see how what that's done is that's basically, um, this is basically given us the width of our light fixture. And then I'm going to do the same thing right here. And we'll just say this is going to be two inches for simplicity's sake. And so now all I'm going to do is I'm just going to trace out or draw a line that kind of follows this edge. So as close as I can to approximate this profile right here. And so what we've done is we've created, created a profile that we can now revolve using the follow me tool. And so one thing that I try to do when I'm creating fixtures like this is I try to keep all the different parts and pieces separate because a lot of the time what ends up happening is I end up adding um, I end up adding different materials and other things like that. And it's a little bit easier if you just kind of keep these as separate parts and pieces. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create each one of these one piece at a time. And so in order to do that, I'm going to start by taking this edge and I'm gonna click on it and then I'm gonna tap the F key to offset it in. We're gonna offset this in just a little bit because this is going to be a hollow piece. So we don't want to revolve this whole thing around the center because then it won't be hollow like an actual light fixture is. And I don't know how thick this would be in real life. We'll maybe say like an eighth of an inch or something like that for right now. And then we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing for this piece right here. And so again, just model this out so this follows as closely as possible. And then we'll do the same thing for this little piece right here. And so you can see I'm just using this image in order to kind of block this edge out. And I'm gonna go ahead and move that up just a little bit. And so I'm just taking each one of these little parts and pieces and just kind of roughing out their profile. So a 16th probably feels about right on this one right here. So we'll go ahead and draw our edge up right here and then we'll do the same thing on the top. So for the top, we've got a piece that's gonna run to about here and we'll go ahead and say it has the same width as the piece down below. And one thing we wanna make sure we're doing is we wanna make sure that we're rounding off or beveling the edges as we do this. So I'm having a segments problem here because this is so small. SketchUp can't add that number of segments in a small space like this. Because this is so small, SketchUp can't fit the number of edges in here that we need in order to create that arc. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna select the whole thing, tap the S key to activate the scale tool, and we're gonna scale this up by a factor of 10. So you can see how when I scale this up by a factor of 10, this is now 10 times what it was before. Well now, I can come in here and I can add this curve and erase out these edges because now what's happening is this is much larger and so SketchUp can fit the number of segments in here. And so then we can just take the whole thing and scale it back down to a factor of 0.1. So you can see how I was able to use that in order to add this edge bevel in here that I wasn't able to add otherwise. So we'll go ahead and we'll rough out the size of this piece right here. And note that because we went up by a factor of 10 and then down by a factor of 0.1, we didn't actually lose any of our scale. And so we'll go ahead and we'll draw our line out here. And in this case, this will be a 1.9 inch piece. And we'll go ahead and rough this out. And then we may end up doing the same thing again. So scaling it up, whoops. adding that little bevel and then scaling it back down. So you could also add this with an extension like Fredo uh, corner or something like that, or round corner as well. And so we've beveled all the edges that we want. So I'm just gonna scale this back down by a factor of 0.1. 
and I think we're basically ready to start extruding this. So I haven't quite figured out what I'm gonna do with this little piece right here. Um, really, there would be a light bulb in here. Um, I'm not really planning on modeling out the light bulb because I'm going to create this and then place an emitter material on the inside of this and I'm not planning on using it at an angle where the bulb would be in here. Um, but you could definitely model that out as well. I think for what we're doing right here I'm just going to offset this in by the same amount and we'll just close out this profile right here. So now we're ready to start extruding this in a circle. And so the way that we want to do that is we want to use the follow me tool. And when we use the follow me tool, what we want to do is we want to extrude this around a circular path. So in order to do that, I'm just going to tap the C key to activate the circle tool. I'll tap the left arrow key in order to place a circle on this point. And I'm just going to draw a circle just like this. And so once we do that, what we can do is we can click on that circle. We can activate the follow me tool in our large tool set and we can use that to extrude this in a circle. So you can see how I was easily able to extrude out this metal piece. And remember I said that I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put this minus my circle in a group just so it's in here separately in case it needs to have a separate material associated with it. So I'm gonna put that in a group We'll use the follow me tool to extrude the next piece. We'll go ahead and put that in a group. And then we'll just do this for the rest of the pieces. And note that I'm not having to actually select the edge of this circle. I can just click on the face and it selects the whole circle and I can use that as a path. So the follow me tool is smart enough to figure out if you select a, a face that you want to use the perimeter of that face as your path. And so one thing you may notice about this is remember this little edge that we had in here? You see how this isn't creating this face? That's because this object is so small that SketchUp can't actually extrude this in your circle. So what we wanna do is we wanna use the, the method we talked about before where we take the whole thing and we scale it up by a factor of 10. And then we should be able to extrude this in a circle like this. And I'm gonna go ahead and select this, reverse the faces, and we'll group this. And then one more. And we'll make this one a group as well. And then we'll take the whole thing, and don't forget to scale it back down so you're not 10 times bigger than you need to be. So I'll just scale this back down to 0.1. So now that we've done this, we can go ahead and we can erase out our extra geometry. So this circle, we can erase that out, we can erase all our extra edges out, and if you want to, you can actually erase out your image. You may wanna keep it in here as a reference depending on what you're trying to do, but you can see how what we have now is we have this nice light fixture component that we can add to a rendering component library or something like that, and it's actually been modeled to scale so it has that actual proper length and proper size. And so what I might do, depending on what you're trying to do, you might wanna actually model out a light bulb in here. Um, probably because my views are mostly gonna be from this angle, I don't necessarily need that. Um, you just kinda of have to be aware of what you're trying to do with your rendering programs. But we can go ahead and we can apply materials to this and then we can use this inside of our rendering program in order to create lights. So we'll just take this whole thing, we'll make it a component, and we'll call it Pendant Light. And if you're creating a library where you're gonna access these by product, you might wanna put the product name in here as well. So um, on Amazon, this particular product was a Deki or Deki Pendant Light. So if you wanted to, you could take this product name and put that in there. But we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna call this Pendant Light. We'll click on Create. And then we can actually take this and we can do a save as, and we can save it into our component library. And then we could import that just by doing a file import. And I may need to go in and fix my axis orientation or location. You may wanna consider putting that on the center here, but you can see how I can take this light fixture and you can add it into your scene for quick and easy rendering. 
So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? Do you create fixtures like this when you can't find them online anywhere? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.